So your tadpoles have grown all their legs, they've fully absorbed their tails, they've now become fully formed frogs. What are you going to feed them? Well that's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode of Frog Watch. I've come out into my garden today to try and find some aphids or blackfly. They are the perfect food for the early frogs as soon as they've fully absorbed their tails and they're ready to start eating. They need something really small and aphids are the perfect food. So I need to search around to try and find some. This thistle here is covered in blackfly and they are the perfect size for our little frogs. However, it's a little bit spiky. It might not be great. Let's keep looking. These dandelions and cat's ears are often really good sources of aphids, but unfortunately at the moment they seem pretty bare. Let's keep looking. I've got a large patch of nettles here and there are a lot of aphids around here. And this is probably the best source we're going to get. You know, but sometimes it can be very difficult to find aphids. Um, especially in this kind of area where I've not used any bug spray. I welcome all wildlife in my garden, especially in this kind of area. This is set up especially for all the kind of bugs. Uh, there's a lot of things here which will also eat aphids. Uh, let's take a closer look. This is the kind of thing I'm looking for. This nettle leaf is covered with aphids. Perfect for my little frogs. But I'm not the only one looking for leaves like this. These black and orange larvae are everywhere. But what are they? Well, you'd never be able to tell from their appearance, but these are actually the larvae of the ladybird beetle. They are voracious predators of aphids and will start to feed on them almost immediately after hatching. The larval stage lasts around 13 to 14 days when they will pupate for 5 or 6 days before the adult hatches out. The adults live for up to 3 years and over the course of its life a ladybird can consume approximately 5,500 aphids. Unfortunately, it seems almost all of the ladybird larvae seen here belong to the highly invasive harlequin ladybird. Originally from Asia, it has since colonised every continent on Earth except Antarctica. It is considered to be one of the most invasive species in the UK, as it took less than a decade to completely invade the country. It is considered to be a threat to our native ladybirds, as it can outcompete them for food. It can also feed on the eggs and larvae of other insects, causing a serious threat to those that share its habitat. So if you do manage to find some nettles or another plant that is covered in aphids, the technique is simple. Just snip off the stem or the leaf that is, has the aphids on them and just pop the entire thing into the tank. It's really simple, but that's not what we're going to be doing today because I've got something else to show you. So what I've got here are some banded crickets that I've ordered online. These are hatchling sized crickets, which means they've only just hatched out. They're the first instar, the very smallest crickets that you can get. And these are the perfect size for your freshly emerged little froglets. When they want to get a little bit bigger, we can move up in size of the crickets. But for now, this is the kind of size we want to go for. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but you can sort of see in here, there are absolutely hundreds of them in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out some of these, shake them around in there. They're just going to wander around in there and the frogs will hunt them naturally. So uh, let's get them in there, get the frogs fed. Inside my tank you can see some nettle leaves I've put in previously. If you look closely you might be able to see an aphid wandering around. But to make sure the frogs have enough food I'm adding in the banded crickets. I just shake the paper insert and knock off a few hundred crickets and leave the rest of the frogs. Of course the problem we're going to have now is being able to see the frogs eat. They like to hide, uh, they come out at night quite a lot and we don't often see them. They're very small, the tank is very big, they're very good at being camouflaged so we're just going to have to wait and hopefully we'll see them come out of hiding when they spot some of the crickets moving around. It's just a case of waiting. So you join me here quite late in the evening now where I'm hoping that frogs will be a little bit more active and maybe we'll see them moving around. As I expected, uh, the frogs have remained firmly hidden over the last few days. Uh, I haven't seen them eat at all, but I know they have been eating because when you do see the frogs, they're looking really healthy, they're looking nice and fat, they're not skinny, so I definitely know they have been eating. I just haven't witnessed it with my own eyes. 
So not only is it late in the evening now when they're a bit more active, but it is about, well, maybe just about over a week since the last video clip. Um, and the frogs have actually grown quite a lot. So because of that, I've managed to get hold of some larger crickets. So we're going to be feeding them some um, size two crickets. These are the next ones up from the hatchling that we fed earlier. So these are much bigger, um, but still about the right kind of size for where the frogs are at the moment. Um, so I'm going to put some of these in. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a bit of a close-up of these in just a moment, but um, this is what we're going to be using. I've fed them all of the hatchlings are all gone now. They've all been eaten up, or one or two may still be in there. Uh, but just a quick word on upkeep. Now, you remember there were some nettle leaves that I put in there uh, with the aphids on? That was in the uh, previous clip. Um, now, they have been in there a little while, just kind of letting the aphids kind of move about and get picked off. Um, and now, because it, uh, it's a humid environment, you're spraying water with them pretty much every day, um, it's being kept humid, and there's plant life in here, which is beginning to rot. So you do need to make sure you clear that away. And with the, um, the sphagnum moss that's in there, and some of the plant matter that you might put in, um, there is a tendency that they will start to get mouldy in places. So you want to make sure you just keep on top of that, just to remove any bits of mould that you see. Um, it is something that you just need to keep on top on. It's, a fairly normal thing to happen um, but I've just spotted a couple of bits of mouldy areas in there in the moss and some the old sort of uh, be beginning to rot uh, nettle leaves which I'll need to remove so I'm just going to do that first and then we'll get to feeding the frogs so you can see this is some of the uh, rotting vegetation a bit of mould that's been left in there just a little bit too long uh, need to keep on top of that make sure I get it out in time before um, it gets too mouldy Although these are packaged up as size 2 crickets, occasionally a bigger one might slip in. I think that one's going to be a little bit too big for my frogs. favourite places to rest is on this small ledge right at the top of the tank. They also like to hang around on the back wall. And amongst the leaves of the vine. For a moment I thought we were going to get lucky. A cricket has made its way onto the ledge and one frog seems to have taken an interest. But as soon as the cricket stops moving, the frog loses it and gives up. Much like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park, if the prey doesn't move, the frog doesn't see it. So one of the problems of looking after frogs uh, as temporary pets uh, is they are pretty much ambush hunters. So they tend to just sit there and wait for the food to come to them. So I've been watching them for quite a while, I've been trying to film them, they're not moving, they're not going to move until they happen to see any of the crickets. Um, and at the moment they're all up there in that corner where their, their favourite spot is. They don't seem to be moving anytime soon, so that's going to have to be it for now. Um, I have asked uh, people on my Discord server, and I tweeted out as well, uh, that if anybody is looking after frogs, uh, following along with this series, and they've got your own frogs or anything like that, if you have any video clips that you would like to share with me, um, that you don't mind me perhaps uh, posting on the next video, uh, anything, any sort of interesting things that the frogs are doing, if they're eating, if they're just being silly frogs, uh, just let me know, just tweet, tweet them to me, you can join my Discord server and post them in there. Um, just find some way of sending me these video clips um, and I would like to share them with uh, the viewers of this series. Um, all the links to my Twitter, my Discord server and all my other social media is down in the description of this video. Make sure you check that out and uh, hopefully you'll come back next time. Um, I'm hoping we'll have some good footage of them feeding. It does happen eventually. Uh, it always starts off like this where it's really difficult to actually watch them uh, and find them feeding. But um, eventually it happens and we get some good footage. Hopefully that'll be in the next episode and I'll see you then. Goodbye.